it's endless. Bill and Hillary, George Bush, everybody's getting it. Presidents, Supreme Court, justices, and senators run up in the White House, erase people, edit them, press the leak. Martin Lawrence was in that chair. We talked about Blue Streak. Yes, I love that piece. He played a role in your life, I believe. How do you feel about him as a person, as an artist? Martin Lawrence is the guy that showed everybody you can make it from D.C. to Hollywood. And uh, I had a personal stake in his success. Every time he did something, it made me feel inspired and really good. And he was always real nice to me. He'd sit me down, what's going on with you, baby boy? What, what? We'd talk about comedy, whatever. And, uh, you know, when we did Blue Streak, we were promoting it, and Martin had a stroke. He almost died. And then after that, I saw him, and I was like, oh, my God, Martin, are you okay? And he said, I got the best sleep I ever got in my life. <laughs> That's how tough he is. So let me ask you this. What is happening in Hollywood that a guy that tough will be on the street waving a gun, screaming, they are trying to kill me. Yeah. What's going on? Why is Dave Chappelle going to Africa? Why does Mariah Carey make a $100 million deal and take clothes off on TRL? It, a weak person cannot get to sit here and talk to you. There ain't no weak people talking to you. So what is happening in Hollywood? Nobody knows. The worst thing to call somebody is crazy, is dismissive. I don't understand this person, so they're crazy. That's bullshit. These people are not crazy. They're strong people. Maybe the environment is a little sick. What did you mean, Dave, when you described your father's death in 1998 as the beginning of a terrible decline? I was 23 when I was doing Half Baked. I was getting ready to turn 24. And I was going through all the things that a dude goes through when it goes from one level to the next. I was yeah. starring in my, a movie that I wrote. So things start getting crazy around you. Yeah. And my 24th birthday was coming on August the 24th, and I said, this is going to be a big one. And the morning that I turned 24, phone rang, and my sister was like, Dad had a stroke. For the next year, I watched my father teeter on life and death. And it was just all this sh stuff, man. Like I was, uh, dad was dying, the half-baked didn't come out the way I wanted it to come out. I was real upset about that. Because it was a real cool script. And then I saw it, I was like, hey, man, you made a weed movie for kids. <laughs> and it wasn't for kids with script, you know. It was all these things, so much pressure. Africa. Then I, um, <laughs> I was in Ohio. I get a call on my cell phone from Hollywood. I'm like, hello, Hollywood. They're like, hello, Dave. <laughs> They're like, that pilot you did for Fox, the, looks like they want to pick it up. We need you to come out because they want to meet with you. And I was like, well, listen, I can't really come out right now. I've got a real bad situation at home. Can we talk about this on the phone? No, no, they would rather meet with you in person. Ah! But you know, like the whore that they turned us into, I jumped on that plane and left my father's bedside, which I regret to this day. And I went out and I sat with these people in this room. And if you can imagine a large circle of people, and I was 12 o'clock, the black dude. Yeah, Dave, we really liked the show, but the, the pilot episode was about me getting booed off stage at the Apollo. They go, you know, but what are we going to do about it? I mean, there's not really any white people in it. So well, it's about the Apollo. It's not really why. Well, you know, we were thinking about the girl on the show. We didn't think she was that funny, not that good looking. I think we should recast her, maybe. And they started using terms like universal appeal. Mm. Basically saying they want me to recast the girl 
with a white woman. I said, yeah, I don't think I can do this, and, and, and I quit. On the cover of Variety, Chappelle pulls the race card. The race card. And I get calls from Newsweek, 60 Minutes. Everybody, we want your story. Now I'm scared to death. I'm like Rosa Parks or some shit. I'm like, I'm not ready for this. I was just venting a little bit. And then, a few months later, dad dies. And that's hard for a young dude in his life. That's a, that's a real tough loss. I was there when he died. And he went from being my father to what are we going to do with the body. Within moments, it was over. And I'm going through all this stuff, and this is the guy I would usually talk to, right? Dad, and I got to figure this out for myself. I don't want to figure this out for myself. You know, I was beat down. I wasn't living right. You know what I mean? Like, the weed thing was just a bad habit at this point. And, and you know what I mean? All these, you know, chicken head girls you mess with when it comes with the territory. I'm just being real. Just being real. It wasn't living right, man. I didn't feel good. And, and the stand-up stuff was just some angry stuff. It was just like I was kind of bottoming out. But when my dad died, because I'd been commuting back and forth to Ohio so much, that's when I bought the farm, which I called on the f you Hollywood farm. Did you stay in Yellow Springs for a while? I'm, I live there to this day. I go, I, I live there to this day. I'm raising my kids there. Look, man, at, at that point in your life, it, it's something so real in contrast to what Hollywood is, a very powerful illusion. And when your dad dies, it kind of just broke the spell, like, oh, this is bullshit. Look, I've been spending so much time doing this. What about my family? What about my friends? Wait, whatever happened to my friends? Damn, I don't even have any friends. Ugh. So I bounced, man. And, uh, New Year's Eve, 1999, I, I moved into that farm, and that was it. As far as I was concerned, I was done with show business.